Hey folks, time for another Q&A video. Got some administrative things I wanna go over uh, at the start and the end, but we're gonna hit some uh, interesting topics in the middle. So uh, first off, um, are there any observers out there who are actually certified CPAs? Everyone who does our accounting are just EAs, still very useful, very proficient, but there is a little project so to speak, that requires an actual CPA, and uh, we don't really know any. Uh, it's a little opportunity there for observers. I had a question, and this actually came from an interview I did today. Um, and it was about how I see in the big picture the evidence for Earth's catastrophe cycle, the magnetic pole shift, the solar micronova. And the best way to put it is like this. In most of science, you are in a narrow focus and you gather as much evidence and data as you can. You formulate a hypothesis and you take your best shot at what the answer could be. And it's usually, again, just from that one narrow vector. This Earth catastrophe cycle, the solar micronova, the pole shift, this is an inevitable conclusion from every angle. I know almost nothing else in science, even remotely close to this. What do I mean by this? Let's start at the big level and let's go to the small and then back in time. From a galactic perspective, we have seen the galactic current sheet here in the Milky Way. We've seen it in other galaxies. We know what it is like, not only from our observations, but from the modeling from the lab to the solar system. We know what the solar system current sheet looks like. Any spinning magnet in space and the system around it is going to have one. We know that they deliver the magnetic reversal point in the system. And given the fact that it's an electric current sheet, it's going to be attracting charged particles. It's going to be pushing along neutrals. It's going to be attracting dust. There are only two things that they know of that trigger recurrent NOVA events, and that is a magnetic punch and accumulating material. And this current sheet delivers both at the exact same time, and it's happening right now. Only inevitable conclusion from that is that this is a NOVA maker. In the sun's case, what we call the solar micronova. When you look at the changes that are ongoing, it's not just changes on Earth that we're seeing. We're seeing changes on the sun. We're seeing changes on all of the planets. We're seeing changes on the nearby stars in the correct order away from the galactic center towards us. We're seeing extra dust in the solar system. We are seeing something that can only be a galactic effect on the entire solar system. It's not isolated and we are seeing the impacts that you would expect from a magnetic punch from this current sheet, and we are actually seeing the physical dust. There's more dust in the uh, interplanetary space of the solar system, and there is more dust accumulating at the sun. We've gone over all of these papers, and by the way, if you need any specifics, you wanna see the actual peer-reviewed literature, go down below the video and watch the playlist. We cover all of it. This is a summary video here. When we look at what's happening, on Earth right now. We see the magnetic pole shifting, we see the magnetosphere weakening, we see the ionosphere, the atmosphere changing, Earth's rotation rate is actually changing. And when we look back in time, we see that this is a cyclical event that happens every so often. And everything you would expect, if you were going to say, hey, is this happening again now? You'd ask, okay, are we due time-wise, and does the evidence suggest it's happening now? Boom, boom, got them both. When we look at even things like mythology, ancient stories, religious texts, a lot of the things, not only in the geophysical world, but in the human psychological world, and in the human behavior world, they're lining up so perfectly. And I know most of my viewers know the Bible better than anything. Yes, it matches exceptionally well, like terrifyingly well. It's not the only story though. There are other religious texts that have this exact same story. There are mythologies that tell this exact same story. And furthermore, not only 
has it followed the story up till now, but these stories culminate with a darkening of the sun, a more chaotic and degenerate society, a major solar flash, major chaos of the planet, the exact kinds of things that finish the story from a geophysical, historical, geological, astrophysical, and galactic physics perspective. It doesn't matter whether you're looking at religion, mythology, modern observations of what's happening on the Earth, the Sun, the other planets, interplanetary space, whether you're looking at astrophysics or the physics of the galaxy from an electromagnetic perspective. This is not, oh, we're on one narrow vector, we're gathering up as much information and making a good hypothesis. There's only one end of the road for, from all of these different perspectives. And that is probably the most profound aspect of all of this. Not only the fact that it exists, but we have all of this information. It's um, pretty incredible. Another question I got asked in this interview, which I would really love to share. What is the best case scenario? And since I'm pretty dead set on what the evidence says is going to happen and there's not much wiggle room with it, the best case scenario is behavioral. What we can do, how we act. And I'm going to put it to you the exact way I put it to these awesome gentlemen this, uh, earlier this afternoon. Not hesitating. Not being indecisive. Being quick on the draw. Being able to think, not only think and put things together rapidly, but be able to make decisions rapidly. I see this divide among observers and among other people to whom, uh, you know, this information comes, people who get exposed to this information. Some say it's interesting and then they want to think about it and others just start to act. They pick up their family and they go to a new location. They start prepping for the first time. They dive down different rabbit holes as opposed, you know, of doing their own research as opposed to just coming home after work and drinking. I see it with people who are interested in Observer Ranch. I've been mentioning it a lot here in these recent videos. Some people, they're emailing me, they know, and they want to pull the trigger. I can't tell you how many people are like, oh, send me the information. Oh, that's really interesting. Thank you for that. Let me think about it. And I don't hear back from them. This is, this is like one of the most important separators of wheat and chaff I could imagine. And I see it with everything. Anyway, for more detail on all those different vectors coming and telling the exact same story, watch the playlist below the video if you need the substantiation, the peer-reviewed papers. Again, this was just a summary video. If you want to know something you can do to help yourself, stop questioning yourself. Just make a decision. And it doesn't have to be that you are completely on board with all of this. If you decide you're not, just don't be and then stop wasting your time with it. Because I'll tell you what, if you're going to be lingering and indecisive in this community, hearing and taking in this information, I promise it's gonna do more harm than good. Just enjoy what little time you got left. I mean that. If you can be decisive, be decisive. Take action. Don't hesitate. Don't wait to start prepping. Don't wait to pull the trigger on something you know you need to do. It's the best advice I can give at the moment. And once again, we have some very fantastic EAs here doing a lot of the work for the observers, but no CPAs. And so if you are a CPA, want to get involved, uh, please shoot me an email. My email is down there. Uh, below the video. Also in the description box, it's listed with the Observer Ranch information. But if you're a CPA, just feel free to use that email anyway. Guys, thanks for watching and I will see you in the morning for the daily show. Be safe, everyone.